It's Friday and that means FNA Friday and today we're going to take a look at the innkeepers for an example of how to take a weight assignment to the next level. One of the common animation exercises is a weight assignment. So you have your character standing there and usually lifting a box, which is not that interesting. Yes, it gets the job done. It's definitely an exercise that you have to do. But if you want to take your shot to the next level or have it for your demo reel, I would suggest adding something more to it in terms of character. Give the character some problems to overcome so that the shot ends up being about the character doing something and it happens to involve a weight assignment. It happens to involve weight in terms of lifting, pulling, pushing, grabbing someone, throwing that, you know, a drunk friend into the car or lifting a heavy sofa into your office. Or like in this case for the innkeepers, which is a fantastic movie by Ty West, I highly recommend that you watch it. In this case, it's one of the main characters there too, but she's the main character where she takes out the trash and has to put it into the garbage container. As she does that, she struggles through a couple things that make the job harder, but it's done in such a funny and quirky way that gives her character, it's just more about how does she overcome all those obstacles to get there, and you don't really look at it as a weight assignment. Now, of course, as you watch a movie, you wouldn't really think of it as a weight assignment, but I like this example in terms of how you get there. What does the character do before the weight assignment? What happens when he or she lifts the weight? What is there a problem? Can she or he not get there? And what is the character coming up to solve that problem? So let's take a look at this sequence and I'll walk you through those elements that I like. So this is a longer sequence. I would technically not recommend doing this for your reel in terms of length. It's obviously way too long. But what I like about this is the beginning. I mean, I like the whole thing, but this is already very telling. And we can already look at this here where you have the character holding this far away from her. Why? Because it's garbage and it's dirty. It might be stinky, it might be leaking, whatever it is, but she doesn't like it. So that as a beginning pose already tells me something that she is holding this, it's heavy, but she doesn't like it near her. But what does she do to get there? Again, this is very, very long, even though this uses a classic moment of very flat perspective, someone against just the wall and doing something quirky, which is being used in a lot of movies where you have that type of camera angle and that can be just for a specific short moment. That can be a whole setup where it's kind of the style of having, especially having people walk in front of a big blank wall and the character is small. It's kind of a trope to kind of reinforce the comedy element. But in this case, I'm looking at it in terms of what is the character doing and not what is the backdrop. I mean, you can use the set to kind of help to tell your story, but in this case, I'm looking at what is the character doing and what is the relationship between the character and the object. So instead of just having the character lift something heavy and then that's it, is there something else going on with that object that the character is lifting? So going back to this, I like that she takes those tiny, tiny little steps. So this here, this little gets a bit better, but I like those quick little steps, quick, 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 and then she comes to a rest. So this could already be the beginning where instead of the character just standing there, hunching over and then lifting the box or whatever the object is, how is the character getting there? Is If the character is holding it, is it kind of a, yeah, I can do this, I can maybe, maybe the character is pulling something that's on wheels and or you're very relaxed and very arrogant, that I can do this. And then when they lift the actual heavy object, oh, this is kind of heavier than I thought. And then the arrogant facade of the character breaks down and then you can see the character struggle. So how you get to the moment of lifting the heavy object could be something interesting and it could be something where you show character and it's kind of your your moment to show acting and a bit more character development. I mean, the shot will be short. I don't know how much development you can show, but I'm talking in terms of going beyond just movement. I'm not just showing animation where I portray weight, but I show how the character is struggling or not struggling or overcoming the struggle while lifting something heavy. So again, instead of just standing, here's the object, I'm gonna lift it. What if you show how the character gets there? And again, this could be cute contrast of fast, 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 slow move with her going, oh. So there could be already a lot of cute timing, cute information about the character and contrast in timing where you have quick, 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 stop, and then you go into your weight assignment. She's very, very cartoony in her delivery. I mean, that's kind of the character in the movie, but it's very cool in terms of animation where clean silhouette holds that away from her as she stops, she is exhausted. Then you got your C curve and reverse C curve. So that is very clear, very animation-y. And then she goes, okay, I gotta put this. And she lifts it up and it's a clear little pause of showing to the audience, 
this is my object, okay? I gotta put this into this. So we know this has to go into here. And there's a clear connection between that's the object that I'm gonna put this into here and that's where it has to go. Then she starts off and tries it and fails. But what I like a lot about that is A, this introduces conflict. It doesn't work, she can't put it in. And now as an audience, I'm interested because hmm, that didn't work. What is she going to do? I'm more invested. Instead of just lifting the assignment or lifting the assignment, lifting the object and go, okay, that was a cool display of weight and I'm kind of done. You can show what well, it fails and now you can show more about the character. If the character is exposed to a problem, to conflict, the character has to make a choice to solve that problem. So now as an audience, I'm interested, well, how is he or she going to solve that problem? And depending on that choice, we know more about the character. One of the examples that I bring up in my classes, which is kind of mean, but it kind of, it's an exaggerated point is if you have your computer on fire with all of your animation and you work on there and your puppy's on fire, which one are you gonna save? The computer. No, you're not. You are saving the puppy, of course. But it always gets a reaction with my students because, you know, your character could be nice and save the puppy or could be the villain and save the computer. And that's a future FNA. Your character doesn't always have to be nice. You can also animate villains. But going back to the conflict, I like to see when a character is faced with a problem with conflict and seeing the choices that the character makes to overcome that problem. And in this case, what I like a lot is that if you look at this, she can't make it, but she is not just giving up. She does this and you can see for a couple frames, she tries and tries and tries. So even though it's very clear that this whole piece here is not gonna go over into the container, she is still trying, which shows her character. She is trying, she's determined, she wants to really fix this, even though it's pretty clear it's not gonna work. And it's a showcase of her character. So it's not just, again, lifting something heavy, but no, no, I'm gonna show you who I am. So as she is failing with this, we are clear about what we wanna do. Again, she brings it back, this is what I need to do. And I like those little things, that little adjustment in the leg. It's not just A to B, it's kinda of like, this little detail work that I like in animation. And now she goes, all right, well, let me try something else. And that didn't work either. So instead of holding this, she lets go. And again, look at that super clear silhouette, just beautiful. And then she fails. And what I like about that is contrast. She's not repeating things over and over and over, which makes it boring. So I tried it one way, I gotta try it a different way. And in your animation, you should strive for contrast. So there is texture to to your animation, to your character choices, to the visual poses, whatever you have. Because if it's always the same thing, it gets kind of boring in one note. So in her case, she does change the approach to it and it makes it more interesting. And it shows us that she can problem solve and she has different creative ways of fixing that problem. Now, as she failed, she's gonna try again. And this is where I would say, don't do this. And of course the shot is already really, really long. I wouldn't say copy this and try that for your wait assignment because it's way too long. You have to kind of take those ideas of what I'm saying here, distill that into something shorter. But in general, I wouldn't do this part because it's a repetition of she did the first time. So now she tries it the same way, it doesn't quite work. But now she tries a different method. And I like this too in terms of timing because that swinging is pretty long. It's not like she just grabs it and goes, all right, one, two, and go. Because it's usually kind of you things on threes, one, two, three, or if it's a bird, it's flap, flap. Flap, it's just a good, it's a good set of rhythm to kind of break things up. If you do fours, it might be one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, boring, and then one. I think threes is a good way to break things up. So in her case, she pushes that. It kind of reminds me of some of the South Park or other um, animated TV shows where they really push the timing really, really, really long to the uncomfortable realm and then even more. Not that this is doing that to that extreme, but it's still going against your expectations and she swings for quite some time. So let's go back. She failed this. Let me do something new. Again, it's interesting because of contrast and she swings and swings and swings and then she finally does it and is done. Steps away, clear silhouette. We, clear, we have a clear understanding of the separation here. And then look what happens. Liquid comes down and that's a new set of problems. So sometimes you can finish a shot, you can be done with the main objective and just add one little button to that as a one more thing. Or sometimes when you have a pose and you hold a specific pose and that's your, instead of just going for a hold, you can do a pose and then a sub pose. So if I point, it could just be huh, like that type of thing. I don't know why I was angry, but you can do a point and then do a little twist in there 
And it's still the same idea, it's the same story points, kind of the same pose, but you're kind of giving it a little bit more texture or again, a pose and then a sub pose to kind of mix it up a bit, give it some extra flair. And in this case, she did it, she put it into, almost put it completely in the container, but now there's one more thing. And that can be a movie, sometimes you have a little joke there and it's just like one little thing like it's added. So in her case, what does she do? She realizes, ah, this doesn't work. And again, look at that clear, clear silhouette. It's such a good pose. I know this is not intentional in terms of I have to think about a clean silhouette because it's an actor and it's going to be a lot more natural in the performance towards the camera. But I, for me, this animation wise would also be really, really clear. So you can see that, okay, well, I got to fix this. And then she does this. And again, I'm going to go back here just for that moment. Look at that. She holds this pose here, hand out, finger here. Again, it's a very, very clear silhouette. I'm just really smitten by her posing in this sequence or in this very long shot. It's like one continuous long shot, which is also very impressive. So what she's gonna do is try to put this in here using her finger. No way she can do that. Obviously just pushing this massive thing with her finger is not gonna work. But that is, a, for me, an interesting character moment. Instead of going brute force, like maybe you can do it like this. This is, it's a cute, quirky trait. It's an interesting character moment. And again, it's one of those opportunities where you as an animator can put more character stuff into your animation. So it's not just weight and just movement from A to B and I'm showing weight. You can show how is the character dealing with this weight, with this object or with the conflict and the problem by whatever the objective is in your shot. So again, that's to me, it's a really, really cute moment. And then she does it and again, clean. She does this, look at that. Clean, clean silhouette, beautiful arc. She is a full on animator. And when she is done with that, cleans up and then even this, we talked about doing a 180. I was talking about person of interest in the clip from yesterday, where you could take someone that sits down and not maybe show the whole thing, like I showed in the sequence where it's potentially getting too long, but you can start with someone standing like this and then turning around to then sit down. Just that 180 turn is pretty complex in terms of body mechanics, but you can show off body mechanics that way, which is kind of hidden within the grand idea of the character just sitting down. So in her case, she could be done and just do like whatever hands are on their body, but she's kind of done, turns around. So A, the complexity of a 180 is there. So in terms of body mechanics, that's interesting to animate and it's challenging and you can show off your skills, but it's also kind of visually, she turns her back towards the problem. I'm done with this, I'm turning my back. And then the way she does it too, she does this and then does that little shake with the head. I don't know if something came up into her face as she did this with the arms. But again, it's one more added cute little thing. It kind of reminded me of Syndrome in Incredibles when he walks and he has that little arm twitch. There's just some moments that characters do that you might say they have nothing to do with the story. But to me, to add an extra cute or quirky or could be threatening or whatever layer it is to your character, that's just entertaining to watch. Now, in this case, it also helps her turn around and then look at the window so we can see this because that character plays a big part in the movie and I'm not going to spoil it, but you should watch the movie because the movie is great. And that ends the sequence. She says, hi Lee. I show this example in every class because to me, it's such a cool progression of what you can do with a weight assignment. It doesn't have to be just about weight. I'm just showing something where the character is lifting something and that's it. No, no, no. You can take your character and put that character into the environment and then choose that object that fits the environment and then look at what could I come up with in terms of problems and conflicts that would make the character more interesting to see how the character overcomes those hurdles. And then you can use that to show something where in this case, she tries and tries and tries to put the trash in a container, but maybe you could do something where the character, there's a second character coming in and they use that character for something mean. I don't know what it is to get that trash in there. I mean, there's so many ways you can change this around and make your character sympathetic or a villain or whatever it is, but it goes beyond just the A to B movement of showing weight. That's my dog. Nini, Nini. Come here. Oh, good boy. Dog. <laughs> My wife got home. He's very excited. Oh, Indy. He wants to go out. I gotta go and open the door. <coughs> ah, I'm back. Anyway, where was I? 
I think that's it. I think I'm just going to stop this clip. Yeah, the dog is going to go crazy. So again, if you have an assignment, it's absolutely fine to go through A to B because you need to do the assignment. You need to get used to the body mechanics and practice, practice, practice. But once you're done with the assignment, you want to go just a bit further and just add more character to it. You don't have to ditch the assignment. You can still show off weight or whatever the assignment is that you want to kind of hide in your shot, but then think about it in a more cinematic way or just at least in a character driven way. What could you do to make this character a bit more interesting? And one of the things to make a character interesting is by giving the character an obstacle. So what is he or she going to do to overcome that obstacle? And those character choices will make it interesting for the viewer. And you know, as an animator, it's also interesting to animate and to come up with those things. And again, it could also just be a villain. It doesn't have to be a hero, which gives you so many opportunities to show off your skills, your acting skills, your mechanic skills, and so on and so on. Next week, I'm going to finish up the series of how to take your animation to the next level. I got some more examples so I can really drill home the process of taking an idea or an assignment and just escalating and go crazier and crazier. If you like this and you thought that was helpful, give this a like. If you have any questions, any comments, leave a comment. If you watch the whole thing till the very end, as always, thank you so much for taking the time and I will see you next week for another acting analysis for FNA Friday or something else that I might post at the beginning of the week. And if you prefer to just listen to those things, I got my podcast. I'm starting to release more and more episodes so I can kind of catch up and all those themes and topics that I'm choosing for my YouTube channel, I will talk about in the podcast as well. So if you want to listen to something during your commute or something else, there is a podcast available, link in the description. And that's it for me. Thank you.